Mr. Heffern here, and here's a video on the law of conservation of energy. Okay, conservation of energy. So you're, uh, first of all, you need to know what total mechanical energy is. Uh, this is the total energy available to an object. It is the sum of its kinetic and potential energies. So uh, E, total mechanical energy, is equal to your kinetic plus your potential energy. There may be more than one potential energy. Okay, so for example here, we got a one kilogram apple moving at 10 meters per second at a height of 5 meters. So at this instant in time, how much energy is available to the apple? So uh, E is equal to kinetic, plus in this case it has gravitational potential energy. So uh, the E is going to be equal to mv squared over 2, that's the kinetic energy. mgh, that's the gravitational energy. And now we're just going to fill it in. So we got uh, 1 for the mass, 10 for the speed. 1 for the mass, 9.8 for the gravity, and 5 for the height. And altogether, this apple has 99 joules of, uh, of total mechanical energy. Okay, the law of conservation of energy. The total mechanical energy before work is done by forces is equal to the total mechanical energy after, plus the heat loss to the surrounding environment. So basically, um, it says you cannot create or destroy energy. You can only transform it or transfer it. So this is one of the two most important concepts and formulas in physics. Simply put, what goes in must come out. So here our total initial energy going into a system is equal to the final energy, useful energy coming out, plus the heat loss to the environment. So EI equals EF plus Q. So this along with F equals MA, these are the two most important formulas in physics. Okay, so example two. Uh, five kilo weight is atop a one meter high table. Atop just means on top of, I'm trying to bring the word back into use. If it falls, what is, will the impact velocity be when it hits the ground? Now assume drag is negligible and the efficiency is approximately 100%. So here we got our five kilogram dumbbell and this is where it is gonna be beforehand, five, uh, one meter off the ground. And then later it's gonna fall off and hit the ground at how many meters per second? So this is after. So before and after. And the force of gravity is going to do all the work. So conservation of energy solution. This is the new solution, right? So your energy before is equal to your energy after plus the heat loss. And in this case, the only energy before is gravitational energy. And the only energy after is kinetic. And our heat loss is zero, so we can ignore it now. So we're going to sub in the formulas for gravitational energy, mgh, and kinetic energy, mv squared over 2. And so we get 5 kilos times 9.8 newtons per kilo times 1 meter is equal to 5 kilos times the speed squared divided by 2. And when we rearrange it and finish it off, the final velocity is 4.43 meters per second. Now you could still solve this type of question using the, uh, the old force and motion uh, equations. So we'll do that just once this time. So we use F equals MA, Newton's second law. In this case, it's only the force of gravity which is mg equals ma, and we end up just showing the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So now we're going to sub that into this uh, motion equation right here, df squared minus vi squared equals 2ad. So our final speed squared, subtract our initial speed, which is 0 squared, equals 2 times the acceleration of 9.8 times 1, and we get the same answer, 4.43 meters per second. So most problems can be solved with force or energy, uh, but usually one solution is easier than the other. Okay, example three. So now this is where uh, trying to use the force solution just would not work. You would pretty much have to use an, an energy solution. So here we have a 100 kilogram super athlete atop a 30 meter high building, and uh, this person's gonna run and jump at 20 meters per second. The super athlete's gonna land on an 18 meter high building and experience uh, heat loss of 1,360 joules. So uh, as you're falling, you're pushing air molecules out of the way and giving thermal energy to the air molecules. So here's the picture for it. So uh, you should always draw a picture in your questions. So the person's going to jump off this 30 meter tall building at 20 meters per second. They're going to experience heat loss on the way down of 1,360 joules. And they're going to land on top of this building, which is 18 meters high. So our initial energy is equal to our final energy plus our heat loss. So initially they got kinetic energy. They're moving at 20 meters per second. They're on a building which is 30 meters high, so that's gravitational energy. 
Um, they're going to land pretty fast. Kinetic energy. Oh, there's a little typo. I should say KF. And they're going to land on a building. So this should be UGF right here. Okay. So we uh, sub in the formulas for K and U. So MV squared over 2, MGH, MV squared over 2, MGH, and then we got our heat loss Q. Then we're just going to plug in our numbers. So uh, 100 kilos times 20 squared over 2, plus 100 times 9.8 times 30 meters of height, equals 100 kilos times the final speed squared divided by 2, plus 100 meters times 9.8 times 18 meters of final height. And then we got our heat loss of 1,360 joules. And when you work out the algebra on this, you should get a final velocity of 24.7 meters per second. I know these questions look a little complicated, and they do take a lot of practice to get uh, to get to master them. Okay, so here's a very difficult question right here. So we got uh, a rocket arrow. So one kilogram rocket arrow is launched from a bow of stiffness 1,000 newtons per meter, which has been stretched one meter, and it's got a two kilojoule rocket motor, which is chemical potential energy, and it's going to be launched from a height of two meters. Later, it's going to strike a target at an altitude of 10 meters. And it's only 90% efficient, so uh, find the impact velocity when it hits the target. So here we go, we're, uh, the arrow's 2 meters off the ground. It's in a bow, which has been stretched 1 meter, with a stiffness of 1,000 newtons per meter. And then uh, it's got a 200 joule rocket motor, so it's going to be uh, expending that chemical energy as uh, thrust. And there's going to be a 10% loss of energy, so it's only 90% efficient. And it's going to hit its target at a height of 10 meters. So first of all, let's take care of the efficiency. So when you start off, you start off with 100% of your energy, and then you have your heat loss of 10% of your initial energy. So altogether, we only get to keep 90% of our energy. We're 90% efficient, and as a decimal, that's 0 0.90. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can move into the uh, regular equations. So we get um, 0 0.90 EI. So we're going to find out what our initial energy is. We're going to multiply it by 0 0.90. And then we're going to uh, solve for our final velocity. We get 69.6 meters per second. So the arrow impacts the target at 69.6 meters per second, 90% of its energy, uh, and it, had, it has lost 10% of its energy. Okay. Conservation of motion and of energy, sorry, and perpetual motion. So perpetual motion machines are impossible. There is always heat loss and entropy in any system. Even the most efficient system, like a water heater, is only 99.9% .9 efficient. So here's an example of a perpetual motion machine. So first of all, you've got a fan. The fan blows a sail. The sail pulls the board forward, which rotates the wheels. Over here, we got a wheel, which is attached to a magnet and a coil. So the magnet's going to go through the coil. This is basically an electrical generator right there, and that's going to make the electricity to power the fan. Now, none of these uh, subsystems are 100% efficient, so the whole system is definitely not 100% efficient. Okay, so if you want to defraud somebody, you want to fool them into, um, into your um, perpetual motion machine, you might do a few things. One thing you could do is hide a hidden battery somewhere to make up the difference. Or you can put it on a slight incline, and if you find some tilted trees, you get an optical illusion. So, for example here, let's say that the, uh, the fan is 90% efficient, skateboard is 95%, and let's say the, uh, mag, the, the generator is 80% efficiency. So altogether we get 90% times 95% times 80%, that's 0 0.90 times 0.95 times 0.80, and we end up getting 68.4%. So uh, what do you do? If you want to defraud people of their money, steal their money, or you actually think that you're going to get it to work, you're a little delusional, what do you do? So, hey, yeah, you just have your uh, hidden battery and you have your optical illusion. Okay. Just like uh, in uh, New Brunswick, there's a place called Magnetic Hill where if you put your car into neutral, it'll seem like it is actually going up the hill on its own. Okay. You can find places like that. So here's a few other perpetual motion machines. So in this one here, uh, the ball bearings fall over, turning the wheel, and then the wheel brings the ball bearing back to the top. But of course, there's going to be axle friction, which makes that impossible. 
Uh, here, this uh, person here drops the uh, the ball, and it goes back and forth, back and forth. But every time it hits, there's a vibration, and we're losing energy. And here we got a car with a rod attached to a magnet, and the magnet attracts the car forward. But of course, the, uh, the magnet is attracted to the car, so nothing happens. And here's a good one too. Uh, so we have um, a water wheel, uh, which is turned by a waterfall, and then it uses that to pump the water back up to the top, and then the water comes down and turns the water wheel. But none of these systems would actually work. So the law of conservation of energy. So don't forget total mechanical energy is the total amount of energy available to an object. It's the sum of its kinetic and potential energies. And the law of conservation of energy is the uh, total energy that goes into a system is equal to the total energy coming out of the system plus the heat loss to the environment. What goes in must come out. You cannot create or destroy energy. You can only transform it. Okay, and that's it. I hope this helps.